Okay, I want to start off with a discussion to remind you guys of what aqueous means. Okay, it means dissolved in water, and these last two letters are key. So when I asked you on the quiz what aqueous means, it means dissolved in water, not dissolves, dissolved. It's currently dissolved in water. Okay, so I just have a little picture to show you what I mean by this. So here we have our sodium chloride crystal. Okay, sodium chloride is one to one ratio of sodium and chloride. And in billions and billions and billions in three dimensions, we would get a little tiny crystal of table salt. Okay, because it's in its crystalline form, this would be solid. Okay, we know that sodium chloride dissolves in water, but because it's not currently dissolved, it's solid. Now, if we add this to a beaker of water, okay, I've got all of our little bent water molecules floating around, and we know water's a liquid, okay. We learned in chapter 8 that water is a polar molecule. So all of these oxygens are winning the tug of war on those electrons that they're sharing with hydrogen. So that makes them partially negative. Okay, so we use our little Greek letter delta negative versus delta positive for those hydrogens. Okay, now because of those partial charges and because our sodium chloride crystal over here is full-blown charged ions, these partial positives are going to be really attracted to the negative chlorides, and these partial negatives are going to be really attracted to the positive sodiums. And what that does is it gets into that crystal and it rips apart those ions and separates them throughout the beaker of water, and we end up with this. Okay? All of our oxides are pointed towards sodiums because their slightly negative charge is attracted to that positive sodium, and our slightly positive hydrogens are attracted to the chlorides, and so we end up with all of our sodiums are surrounded, I mean there'd be billions of water molecules in this space, but they'd be surrounded by the oxygen end of water molecules, and all of our chlorides would be surrounded by the hydrogen end of molecules of water. And this is dissolved. That sodium chloride crystal is broken up into its ions, but it's still sodium chloride. If you drank this, you would still taste salt, okay? So here we still have salt, it's just now aqueous, and we still have water which is liquid. Okay? Now because of this, nothing chemically changed here. If we look at this entire reaction, solid sodium chloride plus liquid water gives us aqueous sodium chloride plus liquid water. Just like in math, we can cancel something that's on both sides of the equation. So sodium chloride can be dissolved and become aqueous. It's a state change, nothing more. Okay, so we just talked about how aqueous means dissolved in water, which means it's broken apart into its ions. Okay, so when we're doing a net ionic equation, first we need to start with a balanced chemical reaction. So I'm going to do this one here. This is a double replacement. We've got silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. They trade partners. We get silver chloride and sodium nitrate. We will be going over solubility rules, but in this case, the states are shown to you. So here, aqueous, aqueous, as all of our double replacements are going to be, we're starting with two aqueous compounds. On the other side of the arrow, we have an aqueous compound, and in this case, a solid, which is a precipitate. Now, when we're doing a net ionic equation, what we're doing is taking those aqueous things, which we just saw, aqueous means it's dissolved and separated into its ions, so we need to do that. Every time we have an aqueous compound, we're separating it into its ions. So one of the things that I like to do is kind of highlight which ones are the cations, which ones are the anions. So remember we always start with our cations in our compounds. So silver is a cation. Sodium is a cation. Okay. Nitrate is an anion. Chloride is an anion. Because silver chloride is a solid, it's not going to split up into its ions, so we don't really care about cation and anion there. We're going to copy that exactly as it is when we write our net ionic equation. But here, sodium is a cation, nitrate is an anion. So we're going to take our aqueous substances. Silver, if you remember, is always a plus one charge. It's one of the exceptions on the transition metal, so we're going to have Ag+, plus, and it's aqueous. And nitrate, one of our flashcards, is a 1 minus. So NO3, negative 1 charge, aqueous. All right, next compound. So we just split it up. Sodium, it's in group 1, so it has a plus 1 charge, aqueous. And chloride 
halogen minus one charge, aqueous. On this side of the arrow, solid does not split up. Only aqueous splits up into its ions. So here, AgCl, we copy it exactly as we saw it in that previous equation. And then we split our final compound into sodium plus one charge, aqueous, and nitrate minus one charge, aqueous. This is called a complete ionic equation. Then what we do, just like in math, we cancel things that appear on both sides of the equation. Nothing changed about sodium. It's aqueous and positively charged on this side, aqueous and positively charged on this side. Nothing changed about nitrate. It's aqueous negative one charge, aqueous negative one charge. But our silver ions and our chloride ions got together to make a solid crystal. That is the chemical change. So our net ionic equation is everything we didn't cross out. Ag plus one charge, aqueous. Chloride minus one charge, aqueous produces silver chloride solid. Okay? Now that's a double replacement. It's also a double replacement that was all ones. There was no balancing required for this reaction. So I want to do another one here. This one had some balancing. Okay, so this double replacement reaction is a little different because we have numbers or coefficients in front of some of these compounds. Now those numbers apply to everything in the compound, so I'm going to just show you one of these as an example. So again, two aqueous compounds, this is a double replacement. I've got my cation here, and cation with lead, anion hydroxide, anion nitrate. On this side of the arrow, cation for sodium, anion for nitrate, but oops, this is supposed to say solid. This one's a precipitate, so that one we're not going to be breaking apart, so we don't really care about cation and anion. Now over here, when we split this up into our sodium ions and our hydroxide ions, I have two sodiums and two hydroxides, so that two needs to come down here. I have two sodium ions, and they have a plus one charge, and they're aqueous. And I have two hydroxide ions with a minus one charge, and they are aqueous. Okay. This one doesn't have a number in front, so I can just split it. Now we know nitrate is a minus one charge, so this two right here tells us that lead is a positive two charge. So two positive, aqueous, and two nitrates this time. So two NO3 with a negative one charge, aqueous. Okay. On this side of the arrow, I've got my sodium and my nitrates are going to split up, but again, I have two of this whole compound, so two sodiums, two nitrates. So two Na plus aqueous, and two NO3 minus aqueous. But my solid is going to get copied exactly as it is. No splitting up your solids, your liquids, or your gases. They just get copied in PbOH2, no charge, nothing, just solid. Cancel out what we see on both sides of the arrow. We're going to cancel out our two nitrates and our two sodiums. Okay. And then we're going to end up rewriting everything so that we go from our complete ionic equation to our net ionic equation, which is two hydroxide ions, aqueous, oops, plus lead, two positive ions, aqueous will give us PbOH2 solid. We can also do a net ionic equation for a single replacement reaction. So the last two examples I showed you were for double replacements. Here is going to be an example of a single replacement. We've got magnesium, a single element, plus an aqueous compound. On the other side of the arrow, Copper gets kicked out by itself as a solid, and we get magnesium chloride aqueous. Okay? So again, solid substances, the copper and the magnesium, are not going to change. They get copied directly. But our aqueous substances are going to break up into their cations and their anions. Cation, anion. Okay? 
So here, magnesium gets copied just as it is, magnesium solid. I'm going to split my compound into ions, two ions. There's a cation and an anion. Copper, in this case, is a 2 plus because of that 2 right here with chloride, and it's aqueous. Okay. There are two chloride ions. We're not going to write Cl2 here. Okay, We're going to write two chlorides, and each chloride, if you look at the periodic table, has a minus 1 charge. So it's aqueous here, two chlorides. On this side of the arrow, we get copper solid because we don't change anything about it. It doesn't have a charge. It's just solid copper. It's a metal, neutral. And then we split our last compound up into magnesium, which is a 2 plus. You can tell that from the periodic table, aqueous. And again, two chlorides, and they have a minus 1 charge, and they are aqueous. That's the complete ionic equation. Now if we look at this one, only one of our ions did not change. We've got two chlorides over here and two chlorides over here. It's floating around in the water, nothing happened to it, it's still aqueous and nothing changed. Whereas my magnesium changed from being a metal to being an ion floating around in solution. And my copper changed from being an ion floating around in solution to a metal. Those are the things that change. That's what we copy down into our final or our, our net ionic equation. So magnesium solid plus copper ions, aqueous, will produce solid copper and magnesium ions, aqueous. Okay, I just want to quickly go through the solubility rules with you guys. They are in your book, and you should have written them down in your notes. I want to clarify a couple of things. I also have this sheet, and I will probably have this on the board with a magnet uh, for the rest of this chapter so that you guys can see those solubility rules and refer to them and not have to go back and look in your book. Okay? But for now, they're written all right here on the board, and I just want to go through each here. So compound type... Solubility and accept is the way that this is set up in your book. Okay? So if we have a compound with an alkali metal or ammonium, just as a reminder, alkali metals, those are your group one elements. So sodium, lithium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, those are your alkali metals. Ammonium was one of your flashcards. It's NH4 with a positive charge. Okay? So if you see any compound that has one of those as its positive ion, it's going to be soluble. Okay? And what soluble means is when we're using it in a single replacement or a double replacement or it's created in one of those reactions, it's going to be aqueous. There are some lithium compounds that are not soluble, but we won't see any of those in this class. Our next set is nitrate and chlorate. Okay? Nitrate and chlorate are both parts of our flashcards. Nitrate is NO3 with a minus charge. Chlorate is ClO3 with a minus charge. If you see a compound with either of these, it's soluble, so it will be aqueous, and there are very few exceptions to that. Okay. Sulfate, another very soluble thing to have in a compound. Okay, So sulfate by itself is not a compound, just like these are not compounds by themselves. But if you have something like sodium sulfate, Okay? It's going to be soluble. There are some exceptions. If you have lead sulfate, silver sulfate, a mercury sulfate compound, barium sulfate, calcium sulfate, or strontium sulfate, those ones are not soluble. So any of these combined with sulfate is going to be a solid or a precipitate for a double replacement reaction. Moving down, we have chloride. In the book, it only talks about chloride, but iodide behaves the same way because they're both halogens. Okay, so chloride and iodide, those compounds are always soluble except for three. Lead chloride, silver chloride, and mercury chloride compounds are not soluble. So those will be solid and they'll form as precipitates in our reactions. Finally, down here, carbonate. Remember that's CO3, 2 minus, so any kind of carbonate, phosphate compounds are very similar. Chromate, CRO4, 2 minus, and sulfide is just sulfur with that 2 minus charge from the periodic table. Hydroxide, OH minus. These are not soluble. 
So if you see these anions in a compound, they are going to be solid with the exception of our alkali metals and ammonium. Okay, we can't break our first rule with our last rule here. So they will be solid unless they are with an alkali metal or ammonium.